Hello, hi, hey. I am Jakara in Holman. I am here on the red carpet sponsored by Ballard Spar. I have with me Nicole and Michael from Amplify Her. Did I say that right? You did, yeah. What does the title Amplify Her mean? Well, it's really about celebrating and empowering women in music. So it's a playoff of Amplifier you know, an amplifier, and then of course amplify as in uh, amplifying the voices of women and her being women. Yes, love it, love it. Do you have anything to add to that, Michael? I think the logo looks good. <laughs> Michael is the artistic director, so yes, of course the logo looks good because you created it, right? Actually, that was a two-part. Her brother actually was really? the designer on the, on the logo. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So I understand that the film, as it states in the description, is part film and part motion comic. Wow. And, and it has this interesting dynamic where it shifts back and forth, which is pretty cool. Where did that come about? Well, it actually started, uh, to the, originally it was supposed to just be a documentary and then a graphic novel and a separate motion comic. Uh, the motion comics are actually created by the artists themselves with addition to uh, female illustrators and animators. And when we saw how emotional and vulnerable the motion comics were, we actually recut the film to incorporate aspects of the animations into the film themselves. Yes, yes, that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, I think what's interesting about that is you're not just getting the director's vision in the documentary, which is normal. You actually get the subject's kind of vision as well. I don't even know if that's been done before or not. Right. You know, it's unique. I had an opportunity to actually watch the film and I was able to catch it on Amazon Prime. So if you're looking, you can catch the film. Leave a review, please. Yes. <laughs> okay, I got it. Cheers Leave a review. <laughs> Leave a review. Um, but you can catch this film on Amazon Prime. Where else can we catch it? Uh, you can watch it on YouTube, I believe now. It'll soon be on the new Apple, Play, Apple whatever the new streaming service is for Apple. Um, and I believe it'll be on Tubi as well in a couple, in shortly in like the next month or so. Okay. That's true. I, 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 I agree. <laughs> okay. So in watching this film, you know, I noticed that it touched on many things as it opposed to women, community, sisterhood, um, and, and then one finding themselves. It touched on one of the, uh, a comment or statement that was made in the film is, um, sometimes people will hire women just to say that they're not sexist or that they don't work with women without ever checking out their work. So <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think as women, we really need to support each other. And if you are hired for, uh, you know, to be part of a festival, then say, you know, put it out there and say, I'll, I'll only be on the bill if, if we can have another woman on the bill in addition to us. I believe that it is shifting and changing, but it could happen faster, definitely. Um, yeah, I think that hopefully now with all of the amazing movements that are happening all over North America, that we're going to see a little bit less of that. Okay. Now... I, I'm going to call out a few sayings, and I don't want to tell too much of the film, but I watched it and I enjoyed it. Another statement was, women get many first chances, but not a lot of second chances. What, please, please, please talk about that a little bit. Well, I think tied into the comment that you just made, if someone hasn't listened to your music and they put you on a bill and they don't actually know the kind of music that you're playing, and if you don't go up on stage and kill it, then you're not going to get a second chance. And what are your thoughts? And I don't want to say, what's a man's point of view, but, but what are your thoughts? Well, I think I don't think any artist should be like put on a bill just because of what they look like or what gender they are. Mm -hmm. It should be because it's what your audience wants to see. But even, even like building kind of diversity on purpose sometimes is a little weird too. Like it just feels face and kind of forced, right? It should be, that should be organic on some level. You know, that's kind of my feeling on it. My, my favorite part, though, was when um, one of the DJs was saying that she was, she was like in line, um, a part of a crowd. And, and one of the guys were, you know, really excited to get in there. And he was like, yo, 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 we have to get in. We have to get in. I'm going to miss my favorite DJ. Oh, yeah. And she turns to him and she's like, you're not going to miss your favorite DJ. And he's like, yeah, well, how do you know? And she's like, because I'm that DJ. And his mouth just dropped because he did not know that, you know, he's been tuning in to this music, you know, that has, you know, kind of been faceless. And then here is the DJ that he's faced with. And he's like, you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
do is is that something to to pick apart or just something for us to be more conscious of? Well, I think uh, in her case, she went with sort of an androgynous name so that she would get an equal opportunity or an equal shot. And the reality is we shouldn't have to do that. We should be able to, you know, call ourselves whatever we want and get that equal opportunity. But what's kind of interesting about that particular music producer in the film is eventually she actually transitions into uh, really understanding that there is something super unique that she has to offer as a woman in the scene, that it's something different, that it's something unique. And so what we are really hoping in this film is that we're celebrating the unique expression that women have to offer the scene that is outside of what uh, maybe they're expected to be like. And so that is really the strong message in the film. I love that. I love um, that you mentioned on a good piece of what you want the audience to take away from this film. And talking about transitioning, I did I did catch in a film that there was one of the earlier um, musicians or artists that says, you know, I just want to be respected and appreciated as an artist, not as a female artist. And, and I don't feel like it's necessarily my place to pave the way for female artist. I just want to be an artist. And then later on in the film you say, it is, someone said, it is my responsibility to pave the way. It is my responsibility to open up doors for those that come behind me. Can you please elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's really important right now. The reality is we're simply not in a place where it's equal. Um, and so until we get to that place, we have to help each other out and push, lift each other up. And for me, one of the biggest lessons in this whole journey has been this idea of women supporting women, not competing against each other, but really trying to push each other up and lift each other up and realize they do have something super unique and super special uh, that, they get to, that they can offer up in the world. And if we support and stand by each other and protect sort of our, our expression, uh, allowing our expression to be anything we want it to be, and you know, don't be catty or do any of those things to put each other down, then eventually we won't have to worry about that exact statement. We won't have to worry about uh, claiming the space for women because it'll just be expect it, it'll just feel natural. And that's what we're aiming for. I love it. I love it. You know, the, the film touch on a lot of different aspects, including chronic illness, including homelessness, including acceptance, including sexuality. This, this film, this, this motion comic just has so much complexity. It has so much narrative. I mean, you guys really took on a generation, a culture of, you know, unpacking trauma and just so much. Please tell me what the inspiration was around that. Really just being able to give women, you know, a voice, being able to showcase both, you know, the good and the bad in people's lives and, and really being a piece where our generation can, can, can feel a sense of uh, you know, like have new heroines, so to speak, to look up to. The idea that our flaws are not necessarily things we need to shed, but rather uh, become a part of who we are, turn our gifts, so to speak, into strengths, and all of us, you know, have the power to become our own superheroine, essentially. Become, become our own superhero. Become our own superhero. I love that. I love that. Be the person you inspire to be. Become our own. I just, I, that's going to stick with me as my motto of the year. Become my own superhero. Do you like that? I love it. Yeah, perfect. Can that be our motto? Absolutely. As a whole? Yeah. Okay, so let's, 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 let's soften it up a little bit. How are you feeling being at the Twin Cities Film Fest? I mean, I love it. To be quite honest, uh, we've we've played in many uh, festivals. This is we've had about 100 screenings around the world with this movie. But we were actually shut out of most of the film festivals. People felt, couldn't quite get this film is edgy, uh, and so we uh, didn't actually get a lot of opportunity to play in film festivals. So we are so appreciative that Twin Cities opened their arms, invited us in to play at this festival, and it means a great deal, especially after working really hard for two years to get this movie out and and all around the world. I can't believe you were shut out, but I also understand the culture that we live in, and it just helped me to just inhale and exhale, something that we do very well in Twin Cities. So I am here at the Twin Cities Film Fest with Nicole and Michael of Amplify Her. I thank you for being on this red carpet with me. I thank you, Ballard Spar, for sponsoring this event, this opportunity. Do you have any last words, what you would like us to take from what you created, this piece of art? Just be your own worthy self and don't be afraid to put your expression into the world because you will find an audience for it.
Michael. Michael, I need last words. Okay. Besides, become your own superhero. Yeah. Okay. I think as a, like, I was a supporting role to Nicole in this film. You know, I've just been there to assist and help make sure she gets her vision done and it looks as good as it possibly can. So I'd say as a guy, don't be afraid to do that. Just don't be front and center. Back up, you know, be the backup. An ally. An ally, yeah. Even said better, thanks. Guys, we need you to be allies for us women. Women, we need you to be allies for the men. Let's just be allies for each other. Once again, I am here with Michael Tension. Nicole Sorkin. I'm Jakara Holman. This is the Twin Cities Film Fest. Red Carpet, sponsored by Ballet Spar. Thank you for watching.